We previously introduced matrix transformations, a type of function that takes a vector from some space and transforms it into a different vector in the same or a different space by multiplying the vector by some matrix A, called the standard matrix of the transformation. Link in the description to the video going over that. In this video, we'll look at a special group of matrix transformations. Those are the reflection operators, both in R squared, which we see here, and in R cubed. We'll look at a few different reflections in these spaces and the standard matrices for those reflections. We'll also do a few computations of carrying out these transformations via matrix multiplication. Let's begin in R squared with this operator, reflection about the x-axis. Certainly what this transformation does to a vector xy is negate the y. As we can see in the picture, negating the y produces a reflection across the x-axis. That's pretty easy to see in a picture, but how do we capture that in a standard matrix? Well, as we've seen previously, link in the description where we go over this, the standard matrix of a matrix transformation depends totally on the images of the standard basis vectors under the transformation. So we take the standard basis vectors from the domain, which is R squared, put those through the transformation of reflection about the x-axis, and then their images we use to build the columns of our standard matrix for this transformation. So what does reflection about the x-axis do to the standard basis vectors in R squared? Well, when we plug in 1, 0, it doesn't do anything. And when we plug in 0, 1, the 1 in the y-coordinate gets hit with a negative. Then, we take these two images to build the columns of the standard matrix. So here we see reflection about the x-axis, the way that this transformation acts on the standard basis vectors, and the resulting standard matrix. So reflection about the x-axis in R squared is actually just multiplication by this matrix. Things are similar for reflection about the y-axis. Certainly, this transformation will negate the x-coordinate. We can see in the picture that negating the x-coordinate produces a reflection across the y-axis. If we take the standard basis vectors from R squared and plug them into this transformation, plugging in 1, 0 produces negative 1, 0. Again, it's negating that x-coordinate. And the image of 0, 1 is just 0, 1. That doesn't get changed at all. We can then take these images of the standard basis vectors to build the standard matrix for the transformation. So, reflection about the y-axis in R squared is actually just multiplication by this standard matrix. Finally, reflection about the line y equals x. You may recognize this as being what it looks like when you have the graph of a function and the graph of its inverse, because what the transformation does is just swaps x and y. T of xy, in this case, is yx. That's how we reflect a vector across the line y equals x. Now when we take the standard basis vectors from R squared and put them through this transformation, the image of 1, 0 is 0, 1, and the image of 0, 1 is 1, 0. We then take these images to build the columns of our standard matrix. So reflection about the line y equals x in R squared is just multiplication by this standard matrix. So let's try this out. We'll use matrix multiplication to find the reflection of negative 3, 1 about the x-axis, the y-axis, and the line y equals x. We can find the reflected image of this vector, negative 3, 1, simply by using matrix multiplication with the standard matrices that we saw a moment ago. So to reflect it about the x-axis, we multiply by the standard matrix for that transformation, 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Matching up 1, 0 with negative 3, 1 and doing the multiplication and addition gives us negative 3 in the first row. And then 0, negative 1 with negative 3, 1 produces negative 1 in the second row. As expected, reflection about the x-axis carried out with this matrix multiplication has the effect of just negating the y coordinate. Now let's do reflection about the y axis using the standard matrix for that transformation. 
First, the first row gets matched up with that column. That's going to produce positive 3. And then the second row gets matched up with the column. That's going to produce 1. And, as expected, reflection about the y-axis has the effect of negating the x-coordinate. Finally, reflecting across y equals x using the standard matrix for that transformation. This row gets matched up with this column, producing 1 as the first entry. And then this row gets matched up with this column, producing negative 3 in the second entry. As expected, reflection about the line y equals x simply swaps the x and y coordinates. So those are a few examples of using matrix multiplication to conduct these transformations. In 3D space, R cubed, things work pretty similarly. Reflection about the xy plane has the effect of just negating the z coordinate, which we can see in the picture. And in order to find the standard matrix for this transformation, all we have to do is take the standard basis vectors from R3 and plug those into the transformation. 1, 0, 0 doesn't get changed, 0, 1, 0 doesn't get changed, but 0, 0, 1 gets transformed into 0, 0, negative 1. Then we just take the images of the standard basis vectors to build the columns of the standard matrix. So reflection about the xy plane in R3 is represented by multiplication by this standard matrix. So reflection about the xy plane in R3 is actually just multiplication by this standard matrix. Now, if we consider a reflection about the xz plane, we will see a similar thing take place. We can plug in the standard basis vectors. The only one that gets transformed is 0, 1, 0, which gets its y-coordinate negated. That's what produces reflection across the xz plane. And then we can use those images to build the columns of the standard matrix. So multiplication by this standard matrix is how we can carry out reflection about the xz plane. And it's a similar story with reflection about the yz plane. It's done by just negating the x-coordinate. Eventually that leads to this standard matrix. Let's practice some computation. Here we are asked to use matrix multiplication to find the reflection of 1, negative 4, 5 about the xy plane, the xz plane, and the yz plane. We will do this by multiplying by the standard matrices that we found just a moment ago. Beginning with reflection about the xy plane, we do this by multiplying by this standard matrix. So, the first row gets matched up with the first column, producing an entry of 1. Then the second row matches up with the column, producing an entry of negative 4. And then the third row matches up with the column, having the effect of just negating the 5. So, as expected, reflection about the xy plane just results in a negation of the z coordinate. Next, we can reflect across the xz plane using this standard matrix. Matching up the first row with the column produces an entry of 1. Moving on to the second row, we're going to get positive 4. And then the final row just leaves the 5 untouched. As expected, reflection about the xz plane has the effect of negating the y coordinate. Finally, the yz plane we can, again, do by matrix multiplication. Here is our standard matrix. We have the first row, matched up with that column, produces an entry of negative 1. And you can see how the next two entries are going to just be the y and z coordinates unchanged. So negative 4 and 5. Reflection about the yz plane has the effect of just negating the x coordinate. So that's a quick look at the reflection matrix operators in R cubed as well as R squared. And that's how we find standard matrices to carry them out and a few examples of doing those computations. Next time, we'll look at projections and then rotations. All the while, we should keep in mind that these matrix transformations, they don't just take a single vector from the domain. They take the entire domain. So if the domain is R squared, like here, we should view these matrix transformations as transforming the entire space via reflections or projections or rotations or whatever the transformation might be. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you're looking for more, check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh.
uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count with calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need